Yeah, hey, what's going on, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I've got everybody uh Hi. they they're they're hot in the boots for their 6 minute late stream. Sorry, guys. So, what's going on? I I've seen you on YouTube a couple times. Your videos are funny. You're making fun of scammers, I think. If yeah. I yeah, those was uh, that was a long time ago and then I started attracting a little bit too much attention doing that and then uh they oh, that all got a bit serious and so I stopped doing it. <laughs> But how, like, I mean, isn't attention the name of the game for YouTube? Isn't it, like, good? It's un unpleasant. At least legal attention. And I, I didn't have money at the time. So it was yeah. a case of people were coming at me with, a, like, well, I'm suing you for this and I'm suing you for that. I, right. I don't have any money to be sued for at the time. Um, <laughs> so it, it was a case of, like, you, you can do, but I can't even afford a lawyer. So you, what are you going to take? <laughs> Enjoy your default judgments that are uncollectible. Yeah, yeah I get you. <clears throat> so what are you up to now? I think I think I saw I, I went on your channel and I looked at your last video and it was a TA video and you're like Bitcoin's definitely not going to 10k so I just wanted to is the first thing I'm going to say Bitcoin's going to 10k yeah <laughs> I know I, 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 I've been told by many many people that you're going to pick me up on that one yeah. I disagree with you but I don't all think right. we should dwell on that quite too much because I don't think we'll ever agree with each other at all so it won't be a very well, well no I mean my, my my thesis will be invalidated when it doesn't hit within the next year if it doesn't hit within a year, I was wrong. <clears throat> I mean, but you could be right in 10 years' time. No, I don't care. No, no, no. I'm not doing any of that, like, weak prediction <laughs> stuff. My prediction is very simple. Markets don't do the things identically, but they rhyme usually. And people, there's a joke amongst traders that everyone's like, this time's different. It's almost never different. It was a buy the rumor, sell the noise event, just like the CME launch was in 2017. It was the Coinbase launch today. And then Ethereum died 27 days later in 2018, and it died 27 days later this time. So I'm just telling you exactly what happened last time. So it doesn't take a whole ton of prediction. I copy pasted the old chart over today's chart, and it goes to 10K. So that's it, you know? <clears throat> I just think that's what everybody thought last cycle. I, everybody I, I thought know, last cycle I, I, wouldn't yeah. dip too. I know, That's I why know it dips. That it dips because no one thinks it will. If everyone thought it would dip, it wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I was the guy at 6K saying it won't dip, and then it did dip, and then I got liquidated. So, um, <laughs> Thank <laughs> so God for yeah, honesty. It, 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 well, it cost me last time around, but ultimately it was the best thing that ever happened to me when I got liquidated last time around because it meant that I had no money left. It meant I had to work harder than ever, <laughs> and I'm working harder than ever in the middle of a bear market, accumulating <sighs> so much cryptocurrency so that when Bitcoin went up to $64,000, <laughs> suddenly I'm, I'm rolling in cash. Nice, and uh, yeah. that was... That was like it was the best thing that ever happened to him was getting liquidated and I, it wasn't even with my money it was with with i was helping a, a guy was helping me out by funding me ah. and I got um, so yeah that happened oh um, man very nice guy by the way i paid him back i paid him back a long time ago thank goodness um thank goodness yeah the whole well, life has changed yeah good stuff man um so what do you want to talk about i mean i'm, I'm down to talk about anything man well, I asked my audience and they said, well, I, I want to know personally more about Hex because sure. I, I just see people calling it a scam. You know what people call it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know everything. Yeah. You get it all the time. Yeah. I have always reserved judgment on Hex um, just because I've never looked into it. Um, and so if you could give me the, the – as in I've, well, I've looked into it a little bit. You know mm -hmm. I have because we have that basic discussion. But I only know as much as what I've already discussed. Well, sure, it's, it's real easy. <clears throat> um, and then from there, everyone wants to know about Pulse. Sure. So you can tell me about that as, as yep. well. That would be really interesting to know more yep. about that and how it fits in. Uh, you mm -hmm. won't hear very many difficult questions from me because I'm not educated it's enough good. to question you. It's all good. <laughs> so uh, if you did a proof of work change in Bitcoin, so right now Bitcoin only has two functions. One, mine inflation, mint new coins out of thin air. Two, send those coins around. That's it. Those are the only two functions that people use in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So what if you replace the mine inflation function? And let's talk about that one real quick. So when you mine Bitcoin inflation, how do you mine it? With what? Electricity and what? Hardware. And where do you buy those things? Well, from the electricity company, let's say 25% of the time you're destroying the environment. And with the hardware company, you're enriching some foreign company that doesn't talk to you on Twitter, doesn't care about anything, is like a faceless, mindless corporation. And it ain't American, for sure. Or in the UK. So, 
And what do they do with that inflation that they mine? They dump the price. So they buy electricity and mining hardware and they murder the price. And that's what they do all day, every day, every 10 minutes. That's what happens in Bitcoin for security. Now, even though they had that security in quotes, they had two inflation bugs where anyone could have minted as many free coins as they wanted and did. And they had to roll the chain back in 2010. And they would have had to roll it back again two years ago, except a person that found the bug responsibly disclosed it instead of minting as many free Bitcoin as he wanted for himself. That's mm -hmm. a miracle. I, I, I don't know too many people that would have decided that way. So... What if you replace that proof of work, proof of waste by design? What if you replaced it with something smarter, something that didn't destroy the environment, something that didn't murder the price, something that rewarded people to defend the price and hold the price up instead of dump it? And that's all Hex is. Hex is like Bitcoin with a proof of work change where you earn inflation in the system, not by destroying the environment, not by enriching foreign mining hardware companies, but by just delaying gratification and waiting. It's proof of wait. So just like your bank, you deposit money at your bank, you lock up the money, the longer you lock, the more interest you get. Where is the interest paid from? People think it's from loaning your money out. It's not what happens. They don't loan your money out. Your money is a liability, not an asset. Instead of loaning your money out, they leave it sit as a reserve and then they get a multiple of that money for free from the government. And by free, I mean artificially low rates that are so cheap that they're basically free. Then they just mark those rates up and lend that 10 times larger money out and make 10 times the money on your money, which never gets lent out. So in fact, your yield at your bank is from inflation because the money the government gives them is so inflated out of thin air. And the yield to Bitcoin miners is from inflation, money out of thin air, minted out of thin air. And the yield in Hex is from inflation, which is minted out of thin air. But here's the difference. If you're an average size, average length staker in Hex, you're not getting diluted. You're get one that's getting the coins. You're just minting extra coins for yourself. The only people in Hex that actually get diluted and are paying a kind of penalty for the inflation are those that are unstaked. And so it's a virtual lending system in that the people that stake their coins, burn them, take them off market, delay gratification, which raises the market price, assuming static demand or increasing demand, it raises the market price. And the only people that can harvest that increased market price are those that are being diluted because they're not being paid inflation and they're not delaying gratification. They're just sitting there on liquid coins. And so it's awesome. And, and it's self-balancing. If, if more people stake, the rate goes down. If less people stake, the rate goes up. It's absolutely so amazing. The, the, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I just don't get why it's controversial. Because um, people are stupid. I, I mean, look, I, Peter I just, Schiff thinks I, Bitcoin's a scam. Noriel Rubini thinks Bitcoin's a scam. Uh, the guy that wrote Black Swan, Nassim Taleb, he thinks Bitcoin's a scam. Depending on who you talk to, Bitcoin's a scam. And so you have people that think Bitcoin's a scam. And then you have people that think all cryptos are scam. And then you have people that think just some cryptos are scams. And then you're just, you have different levels of ignorance. And while they're remaining ignorant, we're up 385,000% in price in a year and a half. I, and I, while they're I, still I, figuring I, it out, they're like, I, oh, I what's going on? Like what's that. going on? Rich, Richard told us, but we don't understand it. That's fine. We'll all get rich and you could buy the top like Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor said Bitcoin was garbage in 2013. and was going to die like online gaming. Tweet's still online. I had huge bags of Bitcoin in 2013. I, I was mining full blocks on my own yeah. Yeah. in 2011. It's one of the things, it's, it's one of the... The things that I've always found strange is that because I mean I bought, bought my first Bitcoin in 2013. Um, at the time, though, I'm I'm a child. In 2013, I'm not I'm not a very old person, so I bought mine because I saw the Silk Road as something that was quite an appealing. Just it looked interesting, um, and that's why I bought my first Bitcoin. Never used it, and then eventually sold it for the, what I bought it for a few years later. Um, but I, I Michael Saylor has always annoyed me in that respect of being he. he it's all right changing your mind, but he's gone from being really polar opposites of what he once was. Well, he also says things that don't make any sense. So, he, you know, he like, so I'm, I'm glad that he, I respect that he has pumped everybody's bags. I respect that he has got a billion plus dollars into cryptocurrency from people that otherwise might not have done it. I respect that. Thank you, Michael, for, for making us all wealthier. That being said, 
some of the stuff you say, it doesn't make any sense. So what, what happens is people discover Bitcoin. It's like a gateway drug. And then they develop these ideas about what makes something good. And some of them are right and some of them are wrong. So here's some right ones. We like censorship resistance. We like uh, immutability. We like a known future supply. We like low inflation rates and, and monetary uh, expansion, which is basically minting coins. But then they get some ideas that don't make any sense. So they think wasting electricity is actually a benefit. And so they confuse cost with benefit. They, ex ex they ex confuse price with value. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. And you could pay a lot for something that sucks. And in the case of proof of work, if Bitcoin would just rotate off of proof of work and switch to proof of stake, the price would do better. The environment would do better. Those scumbag miners could go out of business already. And the, the world would be a better place because it's, it's security theater anyway. These are all socially enforced networks anyway. And I've seen more problems on proof of work networks than I've seen in proof of stake networks. I mean, let me give you a list of the proof of work networks that have had inflation bugs where anyone could have minted some free coins and did. Ravencoin, hacker came and minted 10% of the supply, dumped it on exchange. I remember that. that was... Lumens, Bitcoin, Monero, but they caught it before it was done. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the pink one. Uh, no one uses Bitcoin, but a bunch of people forked it. So, for instance, Monero is a fork of Bitcoin. Mm. Um, I guess maybe somebody uses Bitcoin, but I, I don't know too many people that use it. But it was forked a lot, and, and then all those forks had inflation bugs. And so you see, and what else? Ethereum Classic is 51% attacked all the time. Uh, you know, proof of work, man, it doesn't seem that secure because I see it having huge problems all the time from things that have nothing to do with the hash rate. And so if you want security, uh, yeah. you get audits and you have a bug bounty program and you have modular locked software. Like in Hex, our consensus code is locked and isolated. You can't accidentally screw it up when you're trying to improve the network. But in Bitcoin, it's spaghetti code. The networking and the wallet and the consensus is all intertwined. And this last inflation bug was introduced when they tried to make the networking stack better. Oops, anyone can as many free coins as they want now. Oopsie daisy. And so I, Hex will I, I, always be more secure than Bitcoin in that respect. It's, it's like having a, a constitution versus having what we have in the UK where everything, you can, you can edit anything, whereas a constitution is like having a base layer of rules and then you can change off the back of that rather than just having a jumbled mush of... Uh, it makes sense. It makes sense what you're saying. Um, I, I am interested as well because one of the most common things that people have discussed to, to me with Hex is, oh, well, how is the price so high? And we discussed this as well with regards to liquidity and the depth of liquidity, but if you could just explain how... Sure how the price of hex is so high do you know when when the website first came out it had on there designed to go up 10,000 x and everyone had a heart attack scam <laughs> scam 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 that's what everyone said now the price is up 4,000 x before staking 8,000 x plus with staking who was right i was right now where did i get that number from i just looked at what ethereum did i said okay ethereum did 10,000 x in two and a half years I design better game theory than they have. Why don't we do 10,000 X in two and a half years? 